Many of you are wondering what are the benefits of becoming a cabin crew? Salaries? Does it worth it to spend or invest money on myself to study or just to get some courses or to improve myself when it comes to language or many other things? Does it worth it to spend money on myself to become a cabin crew? Today I am here to answer all these questions and by the way it's worth it to spend money on yourself to become a cabin crew because the benefits are great please watch the video till the end i'm going to explain everything in details for you today my name is ahmed i've been a cabin crew for almost five years with etihad airways i would like to welcome you back to my channel fit to fly thank you for being there for me let's get this video started Let's agree on one thing, the benefits are not only salaries, or not only money, but there are some other benefits that can save you a lot of money, and it will save you a lot of money. It's all a package full of benefits. I wrote down some benefits here, so I don't forget it. Number one is the medical insurance. The medical is very, very, very important. Once you sign the contract with your airline, they provide you with worldwide medical insurance you are covered anywhere in the world so if you get sick anywhere in this world you are fully covered you just need to go to the hospital get it checked pay the money get the bill and send it to the insurance company they will refund you back number two is end of service benefits what does it mean once you sign the contract with your airline you agree on some certain amount of money or let's say you get paid one to one week per year one month per year just it depends on the contract how many months you're gonna get paid for every year you spend with this airline it could be one month two month one week two weeks and some of them they say oh, if you spend with us three or five years you're gonna get more allowances so basically end of service benefits are very very important especially if you spend more than five to ten years with this airline number three which is the leave with your airline you're entitled for 30 days leave you get an annual leave ticket this leave ticket is fully paid with your current airline to the destination where you just signed the contract for example let's say germany because today I'm here in Frankfurt, so let's say Germany. So when you sign the contract and you say your home country is Germany, so every year you're entitled for an annual leave ticket, two ways, going and coming back for free with this airline. Number three, which is the uniform. The uniform that you're going to wear with your airline, it's covered by this airline. You don't need to pay money for it. So once you finish your training, they will provide you with this uniform and every year they will it depends on the contract you will be entitled for some certain numbers of uniform number four transportation transportation is fully provided and fully covered by your airline from accommodation to the airport and to the academy plus from the airport out station out station means when you travel to somewhere like germany or anywhere in the world to the hotel number five accommodation which is amazing because when you sign the contract you will be entitled for accommodation with your airline it's a shared same gender accommodation same gender means boys together and girls together this accommodation is fully furnished you have everything you might need number seven and this is the best part it's ready stop tickets okay stop ticket what does it mean once you start flying with your current airline you are entitled for unlimited tickets all over the world in one condition that your your current airline is flying to this destination also at some point your current airline is doing some partnerships with other airlines where you can fly with them as well on stop ticket so don't worry about that you can travel everywhere with a very very discounted rates and guess what not only you 
your family and your friends also can get these tickets with a very discounted rate. So basically, you can add your friends, you can add your family and your system and you can book for them these tickets to travel anywhere your current airline is flying to. So policies are different from each airline to another. That's the best part of being a cabin crew, that you are free to travel anywhere in the world. Especially nowadays, the prices of the tickets are very, very, very expensive. But to become a cabin crew, you can avoid that. Yes? Good. Number eight, and this what you've been waiting for all time. Sorry for being late, but it's suspension. Is the salary, yeah, money, dollars, dollars. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Let's take it serious. So being a cabin crew, you have, first of all, basic salary, which is guaranteed every month, flying allowance or flying hours. So basically, if you fly certain hours, you're gonna get paid for these hours. Number three, layover allowance. So whenever you travel to any destination, you're, you're gonna get a certain amount of money per hour. Number five, number four, sorry, is the housing allowance, which is you can choose between staying in the company accommodation, so you're not gonna get this, or you can move out or take a leave out, so you can stay outside and you're gonna get certain amount of money per month from your airline. Let's take an example, Fly Emirates. When you fly with Fly Emirates, you are gonna get basic salary, which is 4,650 dirhams. If you would like to know how much in your local currency or in dollars, just Google it, it says to do that. Number two is the flying hour. With Fly Emirates, you're gonna get paid 63 dirham, 0.75 fills, 63.75 per one hour. So let's say you're flying 100 hours per month. So you're gonna get paid 6,000, 375 dirham plus 4,650 which is your basic salary not only this when you go to any layover so you're gonna get paid money as well so it's called layover allowance so they provide you with the food but they don't provide you with the physical food they give you a certain amount of money for this layover it depends on which country are you flying to they have a certain allowance so the average salary with the emirates is 10,388 dirhams which is around 2,828 dollars but believe me it's more than that so what do you think does it really worth it to become a cabin crew or not the answer is with you since i mentioned emirates and the benefits of becoming a cabin crew with emirates sorry I'm going to mention Etihad as well. All the benefits are all the same except when it comes to the salary wise and this benefits wise. So salary with Etihad starts with 3,750 dirham per month. The flying hour is 44 dirham. And the over allowance, it depends from which destination you're flying to and which continent as well you're flying to. It's different, okay? But let me explain something for you. Flying hour between Etihad and Emirates are totally different. For example, Etihad is paying you 44 dirham, right? Emirates is paying 63 dirham 0.75 pills. So you might assume that, ah, so Emirates is paying you more. But actually this is not true. It's almost the same when it comes to the flying hour. How? I'll explain to you how. When you start flying, you will know something called briefing time, boarding time, and take off time. Cool? Cool. Briefing time is the time when you go to the, the crew briefing center before the flight. Boarding time is when you start boarding, like the passengers comes on board. Takeoff time is when the aircraft starts to take off. Cool. Emirates starts paying you from chucks on until chucks off. In between, 
your flow, the actual flying time is six hours, five hours, 10 hours, you're gonna get paid for that only. But if there's any delay or anything happens before this, before chucks on and after chucks off, you're not gonna get paid for that. For example, before chucks on, there was a delay for three, four hours. You're already inside the aircraft. There is a delay, technical delay, or whatever reason it is. You're not gonna get paid for that. After chucks off, if any delays happens, you're also not gonna get paid for that. But with the Etihad, it's totally different. So with the Etihad, you're gonna get paid starting from the briefing time. Let's give an example to explain this more for you. You're flying to Frankfurt in Germany. So take off should be 11 a.m. in the morning. So accordingly, boarding, for example, is gonna be one hour earlier, which is gonna be 10 a.m. and take off would be 11 a.m. Accordingly, the briefing time should start one hour and a half before the boarding time. The boarding time is supposed to be at 10 in the morning, right? So 8.30 should be the briefing time. Again, 8.30 is the briefing time after one hour and a half boarding time, which is at 9, 10 a.m. And after one hour will be take off. Okay, cool. With that, you're gonna get paid starting from 8.30 in the morning. But with Emirates, you're gonna get paid starting from 11 in the morning. Can you see the difference? How many hours? You're gonna get paid with that. With it had, but with Emirates, you're not. And let's assume there was a delay, one hour, two hours, three hours. With Emirates, you're not gonna get paid for that. But with it had, you're going to get paid. Did you understand me now? This is the difference. And the end of the day, when you calculate all the allowances, it's almost the same between it had and Emirates with a slight difference, small slight difference. I would say the monthly salary will be around $3,000. Do you think this money is good for you or not? This is the question. And it's not only about the money. You have to put into consideration how many hours are you working per month. With the airline, you're gonna work between 80 to 100 hours per month. And the rest, you either between the overtime, hour station, or you have days off. In days off, you're entitled for a minimum of eight days per month. So, me personally, for example, I am now in Frankfurt. I have 48 hours layover, which is two days in Frankfurt. I'm staying in Frankfurt, living as a resident here. I can go out anytime, do whatever I want. You can consider it as off. I'm also I'm getting paid for this time. Let me give you an example to make the salary thing very clear for you. So paper and pen. Let's assume that you're flying this month 120 hours. But that the hat is going to be 120 hours multiplied by 44, which is going to be around. 5,280 there plus your basic salary which is gonna be 3,750 dirham and layover allowance as I mentioned earlier it's different it depends on which destination which continent you're flying to but let's assume 2,000 dirham the average okay so all in all is gonna cost you around 11,030 dirham $3,000 in dollars. You're gonna get paid average of $3,000 or $11,000 dirham plus free accommodation, plus free transportation, plus free medical insurance, plus one annual leave ticket every year to your home country, plus end of service benefits, plus the best part is a stuff ticket. These are all the benefits that you might, that you will get $3K every month, for example, or the average. Let me tell you, let me ask you this question. Do you think this money is satisfying for you? Do you think this money is worth to invest in yourself and work hard 
to improve whatever you're missing to become a cabin crew? The answer will be with you. Anyhow, I would like to thank you so much for watching my video till the end. If you have any questions, any concerns, write it down below in the comment section. And please do not forget to share this content with your friends. 90% of my viewers are not part of my channel, are not subscribers. So please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye bye.